Good morning. My name is Dr. Harun Gadraj. I'm the director of the Vein Care Centre in Dorset. I'm a vein specialist with over 30 years experience in treating a wide range of vein problems. And I have established the Vein Care Centre almost 18 years ago. Our mission is to treat people and help them find freedom from the unsightliness of veins, veins which might be causing unpleasant uh, symptoms and side effects, and to free them from the medical complications of veins, such as phlebitis, varicose eczema, and leg ulcers. I'm supported by a team of healthcare professionals, an operational manager, administrative staff, and a visiting vascular colleague. In this morning's live stream, I'm going to talk about important aspects of varicose veins, just how huge the problem it is, what causes varicose veins, what problems can arise, and how they can be treated. I'll also talk briefly about spider veins and hand veins. With the number of COVID-19 infections rising throughout the UK, Europe, and in fact across the world, I will also talk about how we keep you safe and secure at the Vein Care Centre, how we look after our staff, and if there is a second lockdown or a circuit break, then we'll tell you how we're going to respond to that. Now, we all know how um, serious and, and how common vein problems are. We only have to look around in warm weather to see people in shorts or skirts who have leg problems. But just how common are they? Well, we've got two great studies that tell us the answer to this. One of the largest and most quoted was carried out in Germany. They looked at over 3,000 adults and the participants filled out a questionnaire. They were examined really carefully by a healthcare professional and they all had an ultrasound scan. They were then allocated to one of seven classes, C0 being a completely normal leg, all the way up to C6, which is an open uh, leg ulcer. Now, there are three very striking features uh, about the results of this study. Firstly, fewer than one in 10 people had a completely normal assessment, that is, their legs looked completely normal, they had no spider veins even, and their ultrasound scan was also normal. Secondly, nearly one in five people had either swelling, varicose eczema or ulceration. That means they had a really significant vein problem. Um, thirdly, when they did the scans, they found that over a third of people in this study had superficial venous reflux on ultrasound, and I'll explain what that means, what it is, and what it means a little later in this talk. Now, the second really good study is a little closer to home. Uh, it's from Edinburgh, and it looked at over 1,500 adults. It, too, involved a questionnaire, a standardised assessment, and classification of venous disease in the legs, as well as a standardised ultrasound scan. Now, this study was particularly interesting because it tells us what happens if you do nothing about your veins. They followed people up for 13 years and they reclassified individuals depending on whether there had been any deterioration. And what they found was nearly half of the participants um, had a progression of their venous disease and almost a third of people with varicose veins uh, developed a complication. Now, these two studies together, the Bond study and the Edinburgh study, confirm that these two conditions, the varicose veins and their complications, and, and as well, uh, superficial vein reflux, are really very common, and they get worse with time. Um, a follow-up from the Bond study suggested that actually early treatment prevented deterioration and avoided some of the complications of varicose veins, such as varicose eczema, and leg ulcers. And there's also evidence in the medical literature to show just how uh, expensive uh, this and, uh, can be to the NHS. Um, it's estimated that the NHS spends well over 15 billion pounds annually treating chronic wounds, of which at least one billion is spent treating 
venous leg ulcers. So leg ulcers and other important complications such as phlebitis, varicose eczema and thrombosis cause considerable distress, time off work and a considerable economic burden to the NHS. So why do we get varicose veins in the very first place? Well, although surface varicose veins are pretty obvious, the cause of varicose veins is in fact deeper under the skin. Uh, I mentioned superficial venous reflux when I described the Bond study and the Edinburgh study. If the one-way valves in the veins that um, open and close and keep blood flowing up in the correct direction don't meet properly, then when you stand up first thing in the morning, get out of bed, gravity can pull the blood down in the wrong direction, uh, down from the top of the leg down towards the feet. Now, anything that travels in the wrong direction in the body uh, is given the term reflux. Some of you might be familiar with um, acid reflux. That's where acid will come up in the wrong direction. Uh, and in the same way, if the valves, the one-way valves in the superficial veins don't meet properly, then when you get up first thing in the morning, blood flows down in the wrong direction. Varicose veins, spider veins, varicose eczema, all the complications of varicose veins are due to this underlying problem, which is called superficial venous reflux. And the only way to find out what's wrong with the leg veins is with a duplex ultrasound scan. Uh, you'll be examined while you're standing and using sound waves a detailed picture of the deep veins which are deep within the muscles of the leg. The superficial veins underneath the skin will be made. We can identify any areas of superficial venous reflux and any blockages. A duplex ultrasound scan is the only reliable way to detect problems with the leg veins and it's not just my opinion. Um, NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, provides evidence-based national guidance on health matters and it recommends in its clinical guideline CG168 that everyone with symptomatic varicose veins or a complication from varicose veins should have a duplex ultrasound scan and in its quality standard QS67 it also recommends that successful treatment uh, should abolish superficial venous reflux and the only way to determine that is to perform a duplex ultrasound scan after treatment. So surprisingly though superficial venous reflux may exist even in the absence of visible varicose veins. So only last week I saw a patient in the clinic who didn't really have very much uh, to see but she had considerable ache throbbing and heaviness and she commented that her legs made her feel old. Now although she didn't have much to see on the surface when I performed the scan I was able to detect quite severe superficial venous reflux in both legs. And it's not just symptoms. Uh, people with varicose eczema and varicose ulcers can develop these problems without any visible varicose veins. Uh, and as you can see as superficial venous reflux is the underlying problem, um, a duplex ultrasound scan is the only way really to uh, sort out the various problems that may arise. Now before I tell you what can be done for varicose veins and superficial venous reflux, I'd like to tell you very briefly about what can happen uh, if you leave them and if they get worse. Now as we know from the Bond study and the Edinburgh study, um, after 13 years, the majority of people will develop um, progression and uh, over a third will have a complication. And uh, if we know that early intervention uh, prevents these complications. So what are these complications? Well, the first one to talk about briefly is phlebitis. Um, it should really be called superficial vein thrombophlebitis or superficial vein thrombosis. Um, the main problem here is a clot in the superficial vein and inflammation in the surrounding tissue causes redness, swelling and tenderness. The main medical uh, seriousness of this condition is that the clot can extend from the superficial veins uh, into the deep veins and cause a deep vein thrombosis. Now although a doctor or health 
healthcare professional may suspect uh, phlebitis on the grounds of the fact that there are uh, areas of tenderness, lumpiness, heat. Uh, it's really only with a duplex ultrasound scan that one can reliably determine whether somebody's got um, superficial vein thrombosis. It's sometimes very difficult to distinguish superficial vein thrombosis or phlebitis from cellulitis. Now the treatment for these two conditions uh, is very different. Um, superficial vein thrombosis or phlebitis may require blood thinning medication to prevent extension of the clot into the deep veins. Whereas cellulitis is often a bacterial infection in the superficial layers of the skin uh, that requires antibiotics. Both are very serious. Uh, both can progress to um, life-changing events. So a deep vein thrombosis may break off and go to the lungs, uh, causing a pulmonary embolus. So that's the main complication of phlebitis. Whereas cellulitis can spread, enter the bloodstream, cause septicemia and sepsis. So these two conditions are both very serious. They're difficult to distinguish and the only way to really sort them out and distinguish them is with a duplex ultrasound scan. Now the next complication is varicose eczema and this is a particularly confusing term because it's not primarily a skin condition and as I've said before it can develop even in the absence of, um, the, of varicose veins. So the real importance of varicose eczema is that it is caused by superficial venous reflux there's continual damage to the skin and the reaction of the skin is to the continual process of damage and healing. And if left untreated, varicose eczema can progress to uh, a leg ulcer. So the presence of varicose eczema is a warning that a leg ulcer may be the next stage in the progression and it should be investigated by a venous duplex ultrasound scan and any superficial vein reflux should be treated. It is sometimes treated with steroid creams and although steroid creams will provide quite dramatic um, relief of symptoms, the redness may improve, the itch may improve, uh, they may, may be much more comfortable, uh, long-term use of steroid creams will actually thin the skin and uh, with time and prolonged use uh, steroid creams will actually thin the skin and make a leg ulcer uh, much more likely. So short bouts or short episodes of steroid creams are acceptable but varicose eczema needs to be investigated and reflux needs to be eradicated and treated. The next complication is deep vein thrombosis. We've known about the association of varicose veins and DVT uh, for many years now Again, another German study in 2013 looked at over 80,000 people and over a, uh, over a three year period, um, this study found that people with varicose veins were nine times more likely to develop a DVT. Another study from Texas showed that people undergoing a total hip replacement were at increased risk of DVT if they had varicose veins. And this study from Texas very importantly showed that uh, people who had had varicose veins but who, have, who had had them treated um, didn't have an increased risk of DVT. So it appears that treating varicose veins abolishes the risk of subsequent DVT. The next complication to briefly mention is leg ulceration. Now this is the most feared complication of venous disease. Approximately 80% of leg ulcers are due to an abnormality of veins, 80 to 90 percent, and the majority of these are due to superficial vein reflux. Uh, most leg ulcers develop in an area of varicose eczema, so if you've got varicose eczema, you've got a warning sign that a leg ulcer might be on the way. Most of these uh, areas of varicose eczema can be treated, and so it follows that most cases of venous leg ulceration can be prevented. And a recent study has also shown that people with leg ulcers uh, can receive uh, increased healing rates. That is, their ulcer will heal much more quickly if they have an intervention to uh, improve or eradicate the superficial vein reflux. 
So those are the main complications. Let's turn now to treatment. Well, in 2013, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, published its clinical guideline CG168, and it stated that patients with varicose veins should be referred to a vascular service. That means a team of healthcare professionals who have the skills to undertake a full clinical and duplex ultrasound scan and who can provide the full range of treatment options. Now, NICE has recommended three treatment options in order of preference. The first is an endothermal treatment, that is where the abnormal refluxing vein is treated from the inside to uh, close it. Um, the second option, if that's not possible, is ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy. And the third option is surgery, by which I mean surgical stripping. And some of you who are listening to this uh, live broadcast may have had that procedure. NICE has also looked at other uh, more recent um, options, such as glue, and that's, that's venous sealed usually, or Clarivane, uh, but these aren't yet recommendations. They are, uh, it suggests, or NICE suggests that they are um, suitable for intervention, but they don't recommend those treatments. So turning to endothermal ablation, um, ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy, let's look at these in turn. And I'm going to show you a short uh, video um, which is an operative procedure, uh, the treatment that we do in our treatment room. So let me find it. So in this uh, treatment option, the unhealthy vein, which in this case is the great saphenous vein that runs down from the top of the thigh down to just below, is treated from the inside using laser energy. And we can identify the vein on the surface with, a, with an ultrasound probe. We can look deep into the le leg with ultrasound, identify the unhealthy vein that's refluxing, and thereafter we can numb the skin directly over the vein and introduce a very fine needle. It's the sort of size that we would use for a blood test. And through this needle, once it's in the vein, we can introduce a very fine laser fiber up inside the vein to the top of the thigh, that doesn't hurt surprisingly. We can then numb the vein and heat the vein to a temperature at which it is closed instantly. All the living cells that make up uh, the vein are uh, sterilized, so the vein cannot regrow and cannot rejoin. And over time, the body removes the vein. Um, white cells and macrophages come into the uh, area, the microscopic cells, they auto digest that vein, that is they nibble it and carry it away. So when we look for that unhealthy vein that's the source of the superficial vein reflux six months after treatment, it's gone, it's been absorbed by the body. And now after successful treatment, when you get out of bed and stand up, blood no longer comes down in the wrong direction, the reflux has been abolished, and there's no down pressure into the varicose veins. And after successful endothermal ablation, the varicose veins tend to disperse, the varicose eczema will improve, uh, leg ulcers will heal much more quickly, and any associated spider veins often disperse, though they may need subsequent injections, a treatment called microsclerotherapy, which I'll come on to um, a little bit later in the talk. Let's turn now to ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy. This is the second option that's been approved by NICE. Um, in this treatment, uh, the unhealthy vein that might be refluxing or the varicose veins are identified on the surface with an ultrasound probe. We can look into the leg, identify the unhealthy veins, and using ultrasound, we can guide a very fine needle into the unhealthy um, vein and introduce a sclerosant made up as foam. This will cause the vein to shrink and shrivel over time. And I'm going to show you now um, a little short video clip of a treatment that we did just a few days ago. So here we see 
uh, Natalie Pike and Maddie Groves. Natalie is drawing up the prescription medicine called a sclerosant. It comes as a liquid solution and then she mixes it with air um, through a special tap and it turns immediately into a frothy white foam. Meanwhile, I am introducing a very fine needle called a butterfly needle into the vein under ultrasound guidance. And once this needle is successfully in the vein, I can see it on the ultrasound and we get a little bit of blood which comes back into the tubing. Natalie has meanwhile produced the foam. It's like a shaving foam or a hair mousse. And, and once it's successfully produced, I will then inject it gently into the vein. Again, I'll monitor its passage into the unhealthy vein using ultrasound. The sclerosin will remove the delicate lining of the vein. The vein will shrink and shrivel and disperse. The foam solution is not like cavity wall insulation. It doesn't stay in the vein forever. Uh, it starts a healing process. Uh, the veins shrink and shrivel over time and eventually they disperse. The sclerosin in the vein will be removed from the body in the same way that other prescription medicines are. So in the same way that paracetamol is removed from the body and eliminated, the prescription medicine in foam sclerotherapy is removed. It does start a healing process and the vein may respond by becoming temporarily lumpy and tender before it disperses. Uh, and some people wonder whether the foam is still present, but it's not. It, it leaves the body within a few hours of the treatment. Now, um, surgery is not uh, the preferred option, according to NICE, but nevertheless, uh, in my practice, I do perform phlebectomy. Phlebectomy is often very useful in removing uh, surface lumpy veins through a small little nick in the skin. Having identified the lumpy vein, usually by marking the, the skin with a marking pen, I would numb the skin gently with local anaesthetic, make a small little prick in the skin and using a very fine instrument I can extract the vein uh, and gently remove it. Now it's not the same as surgical stripping. Uh, there are no major scars and uh, the little prick in the skin through which the vein is extracted uh, heals up and once it's healed after a few weeks it's almost invisible. I'm going to show you a short clip of phlebectomy. Remember it's not the same as surgical stripping. Uh, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt during the operation. You might feel a slight pulling. Uh, it heals very quickly and it uh, gives excellent uh, cosmetic results. So I'm going to show you a little clip. If you're of a nervous disposition, perhaps uh, look away until I tell you it's safe to do so. Um, but for those of you who'd like to know what happens during phlebectomy, here comes the clip. So you can see I'm using uh, an instrument to, to remove the vein. Uh, you can see above, uh, up on the upper part of the leg, there are some little dots through which other bits of varicose veins have been removed. Gently remove it. The local anaesthetic then oozes out a little bit. Um, there is no major bleeding. And as you can see, the patient is lying comfortably um, and feels very little. It's safe to look now. So in my practice, I use endothermal ablation by laser, uh, together with ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy and phlebectomy in combination. It's very rare that I would only use one treatment option. I tend to use all three um, in one treatment session. And they're performed under local anesthetic on a walk-in, walk-out basis. Patients typically come to the clinic and they walk out three to four hours later. Um, NICE doesn't comment on the use of local anaesthetic, but this is my preferred way of, of dealing with veins. Um, I know that many surgeons still treat varicose veins under general anaesthetic. In fact, uh, just yesterday, a patient came to the clinic with um, and wanted advice about her veins in, in one leg and she'd previously had treatment uh, just a few months earlier uh, under a general anaesthetic which I find very strange in 2020 but nevertheless I think local anaesthetic is much safer 
serious complications after endovenous treatments are very rare using local anaesthetic and you avoid the added risks of general anaesthesia. Um, the results of endothermal ablation, ultrasound guided foam sclera therapy and phlebectomy at the Vein Care Center are excellent and uh, we always see patients afterwards at six weeks and six months and complete a full duplex ultrasound scan to confirm that reflux has been abolished in line with the quality standard QS67. And we also see our patients uh, at these appointments to ensure that they are completely satisfied with the appearance. We also will see patients until the anniversary of their treatment so that uh, if any uh, unsuspected uh, recurrences develop during that time, uh, we can deal with them. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, other endovenous treatments that have been approved by NICE but which are not yet included in their list of recommendations are Clarivain and Venaseal. Now you may have heard of these and if you want to know more uh, I can certainly advise you about these and whether they might be appropriate for you. Let me talk now about spider veins. Um, there is no nice guidance relating to spider veins, but expert consensus confirms that people with spider veins on their legs should be assessed by a venous duplex ultrasound scan, in most cases, and where appropriate, any superficial vein reflux and feeder veins should be treated first, and then thereafter, the most effective treatment for spider veins on the legs uh, is by direct injection of a very mild prescription medicine called a sclerosant and because this treatment is performed through very small needles it's called microsclerotherapy. Microsclerotherapy works in pretty much the same way as foam sclerotherapy does. It removes the delicate lining of the spider veins, it starts a healing process and eventually the spider vein will disperse and uh, become less obvious. Now I'm going to show you a little clip of microsclerotherapy and the result of a, of a patient that I saw just a few days ago. So this is a short video of the left leg of a patient. It's the knee area and the thigh is to the left and the calf is to the right. I'm using a very fine needle to inject a clear prescription medicine and as you can see when the injection is successful the spider vein appears to disappear. That, that is it's filled with a colorless prescription medicine and the blood within the spider vein is displaced and temporarily it seems to disappear. The video appearance is very dramatic, but what you must remember is that the healing process takes several weeks to, uh, to, to finish, to complete, and so you won't see the full result uh, for many weeks afterwards. This is a transillumination device which allows me to identify so-called feeder veins or reticular veins, and using this vein light I can uh, inject a small amount of uh, prescription medicine into the feeder vein uh, and in that way I can prevent the spider veins from refilling and the treatment is much more effective. And here's a picture of the patient I've just treated before and after and as you can see the result is very satisfactory. Turning now to hand veins. Well, true varicose veins on the hand are extremely rare. In the vast majority of cases, the arm and hand veins function normally and they just look prominent because they've become slightly more dilated with time because of deterioration of collagen and the supporting tissue in the hand has also deteriorated. Uh, they're not trivial, however. They cause a lot of distress and they have a particular aging effect on people which they do not really like and of course your hands are always on show. Um, I use a combination of sclerotherapy and collagen stimulation 
um, which shrinks the veins and increases collagen support around the veins. The solution that I use is very mild and the collagen stimulation is uh, very effective. In most cases, compression gloves are not required afterwards and um, the results are usually apparent um, just after a few weeks. So, in summary, I would say it is important that um, if you do have varicose veins or a leg vein problem that it's checked accurately by a venous duplex ultrasound scan and that it's treated in line with guidance from the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. Furthermore, I believe that local anaesthetic is preferable to general anaesthetic in nearly every case. In fact, I haven't performed surgical stripping or performed any procedure under a general anaesthetic for um, over 12 years. It's important that you are treated by a specialist team uh, and that you have an ultrasound scan both before, during and after any intervention. Leg spider veins and hand veins can also be effectively treated and um, safely managed with sclerotherapy. Um, spider veins are very uh, responsive to microscular therapy and 80 to 90 percent of people are pleased or very pleased with the results. Now that concludes my talk on varicose veins. Spider veins on the legs and hands and hand veins. Spider veins on the legs and enlarged hand veins are a particular interest of mine and I'll talk about those at another time. Um, spider veins on the face can be treated but with the rising incidence and prevalence of COVID, the possibility of lockdowns and the risks to our staff, we've decided that we won't treat spider veins on the face for the time being. So I won't talk about that now, but it's a topic I will talk about uh, on a future occasion. And we've also decided that we won't treat hand veins, uh, patients who might have hand veins rather, outside our area. We're happy to treat patients with hand veins who are local, but um, we think that having patients come from a long distance away when certain areas may be uh, subject to travel restrictions is not a good idea right at the minute. So forgive me if we don't do that. Uh, I suggest that you look at our website regularly or indeed consider uh, subscribing to my newsletter so we can keep you up to date about our developments within the clinic and our response to, to COVID-19. So, turning now to COVID-19, um, and as restrictions are probably coming in in the next few weeks, how do we keep you safe and how do we keep our staff safe and how will we respond to future lockdowns or circuit breaks or restrictions? Before opening after lockdown, the VenCare team undertook a deep clean of the clinic and all members of the team undertook enhanced training in relation to infection prevention and control with particular reference to COVID-19. We are now COVID secure and we are delighted to welcome you to have vein treatment in our healthcare environment. And in addition, we come to work only when we feel well and after we have had our own temperature checked and recorded when we arrive. Throughout the day, we all wear a disposable surgical mask and eye protection, only removed when uh, eating and replaced afterwards. We maintain social distancing and we regularly wash our hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based gel uh, in line with WHO guidance. These measures are followed even by staff within the administrative office and these uh, measures are aimed to keep you and ourselves safe. So I'm going to show you a little clip now uh, about what you might expect uh, when we when you arrive at our clinic. So as I've mentioned we've got a, a rural location. Um, we're very lucky to have a large car park where you can uh, park and uh, come straight outside the building. We keep the door locked now and you'll have to buzz the nurse will come and open the door for you and before she does that she gels your hand, gels her hands rather. She'll invite you to come in and uh, she'll ask you a few uh, health que questions, check your temperature 
and then she will invite you to gel your hands. She'll demonstrate the gel process. There's also a little poster which will guide you as well. And once you've satisfactorily gelled your hands, she'll invite you to wear a disposable surgical mask that we'll provide. You're very welcome to, you, to sit down. Um, all the surfaces are cleaned in between patients. You'll be guided up to the consulting room where I or my colleague will welcome you in. As you can see, we're wearing um, scrubs these days and uh, surgical masks. After the history and before I examine you, I will gel my hands. Um, it's a thorough gelling process. Every surface of the hands and fingers are cleaned with an alcohol-based gel. And then we'll be invited to have your duplex ultrasound scan. Part of the assessment process is photo documentation. So I always undertake photography before and after treatments. And once you have had your assessment and left the building, all the surfaces that you have come in contact with will be cleaned very thoroughly. You can find full details of our response to COVID-19 on our website, which is regularly updated. Now, unfortunately, cases of infections are rising and inevitably new restrictions may be imposed. Will these restrictions cause us to close? Well, firstly, unlike the situation in March, PPE is not in short supply. So we are not in competition with the NHS for masks, gels, disinfectants, and important clinical supplies. We have adequate supplies of PPE and related items for many months. Secondly, we now know a lot more about COVID-19 transmission, and we are confident that the measures that we have in place in our clinic keep you and our staff safe. And so we've decided that even in the event of a second lockdown, or a second wave, second serious wave, we will not close. In fact, because we're COVID-19 secure, and as we are a healthcare facility, we are exempt from the need to close under current legislation. So given the situation is very different to that in March, as well as the fact that we have already seen significant deterioration of the leg veins of our patients during lockdown, we, we plan to keep the clinic open even in the event of a serious second wave. So if you have appointments or if you're thinking of making appointments, you can be assured that we'll stay open and complete your treatment with the caveat that we're not treating people with facial veins at the moment and we're not treating people with hand veins who are outside the southwest. So what should you do now? That completes my talk. Uh, what should you do now? Well, I would encourage you to look around our website. We have full details of our COVID-19 security measures. You can download our information pack with details of the conditions we treat and the treatments that we provide. Please consider subscribing to my newsletter. Uh, I write these myself and uh, you will then be the first directly into your email box. You'll be the first to hear about updates in the clinic, announcements, as well as details of special offers not published elsewhere and not available to anyone other than subscribers. I promise not to bombard you with discounts or promotions. And if after you've received the newsletters, you think they're not for you, you can simply click the unsubscribe button. You'll never be bothered again. Uh, and that's a promise. And we won't uh, share your email address with anybody else. Now, I hope you found this broadcast interesting. Do please leave some comments for me uh, and some questions. I will answer all of these myself. If no one leaves any comments or questions, then I'm not sure anybody's been watching. Um, lastly, before I leave, I'd like to thank you for um, coming and watching this program, this broadcast. Um, before I leave, I'll leave you with memories of a time before COVID, a time when we 
didn't know what social distancing was, we'd never heard of lockdowns, and self-isolation had not yet been invented. Just over a year ago, the Vaincare team won two very prestigious local awards, one for customer care and one for online engagement. This is how we celebrated. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.